Yeah, uh, good evening everyone. Am I audible? Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Okay. So, week two is over, and uh, I will start seeing the lectures of week three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, what do you feel about the topics of week three? Have you studied vector space before? Is there anyone who have studied vector space before? It's me, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Muskan has studied. Muskan, where have you studied this? Twice I didn't catch you quite. No, I was asking that. Uh, I mean, have you studied vector space before this? Before this course? No, sir. Just in... Is there anyone who have studied this earlier? Yes, sir. MBA. Yes, sir. Okay. Where have you studied, Lakshmi? I studied in my degree mathematics, sir. but of course oh, long back. Done... Yeah, long back, sir. But I was, okay. uh, I, I have a bit of knowledge about that. Okay. So did you did uh, BSc, MSc in math? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And I did MPhil also, sir. Okay, great. Yeah, Arna, we have studied, is it? Yes, sir. Like, we take well, first semester. Sir, I also started. Uh, reading back in the week three lecture, but it's quite outgoing. Uh, yeah. I am not able to Last understand time it's it the is... basics, basics of what's going on. Yeah, for the first time, it may be a but anyway, we will discuss the concept of the week. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so from now on, basically, the concept. Of every live session is basically for the past few, uh, past few hours, maybe, or one hour, we can discuss about the concept, then we will take up the questions. Okay? So we will go by that. Uh, anyone wants to ask any doubt to begin with? Sir, when will be that mock test released, sir? Mock test will be releasing uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, sir. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Oh, okay. Excuse me, sir. I have a doubt, sir. Yeah. So, sir, uh, here the uh, deadline for the practice assignment week three. Uh, uh, is it twenty three or sir twenty four? Twenty four. Because move to Saturday. Okay. Oh, because in the next time it's written that the answer will be visible from twenty third December. That's why the confusion I had. Deadline for week three is on twenty eight. No, 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 for, for, for the practice. Oh, for the practice, okay. So, earlier it was Friday, the deadline of practice was Friday, but many of you have requested to speak with one more day, that's why. Yes, sir, it's yes, sir. like very earlier, sir. Yeah, but we cannot move it to till Sunday because then those who want to attempt get it by seeing the practice solution, they will get exactly. it. So, exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. Yes, sir. Yeah, great, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the, you know, yeah. in, uh... help. Yeah, okay, fine. So, the concept of week three is basically we are studying vector space. So, a space means what? A space means uh, a collection where we deal with different type of vectors. That is the main idea. Now, what is a vector that you have seen many times? We may be in physics. Or if you have any idea earlier, then you know what a vector is. But here we will formalize the that concept mathematically. So for that, uh, suppose I have a point on R2, any point. Okay. Suppose you know what an R2 is. It's x axis, it's y axis. And now take any point on R2. Suppose one comma say this is say 3 comma 4 this is a point in r now here mathematically when we say so this is a physical vector the point connecting that point 3 comma 4 and the origin that is the physical vector we have seen earlier in physics or when we are studying speed velocity all these things then we have seen this type of vector but when we are studying mathematically we will only uh, consider this 3 comma 4 as my vector. This point is my vector. Okay. 
so this is the geometrical significance and this is the mathematical part of it this is the vector we are considering in r2 this uh, coordinate 3 comma 4 is a vector suppose we go to in so this is in r2 now suppose we move to r3 then it will have three coordinates right a comma b comma c something like this so all those points set up all those points will be a vector right so I, when i am saying a vector this set this set will have some operation so we know what are operations so first operation we need is addition and second operation is called scalar multiplication right so these two operation we need we know what an addition is and we know what scalar multiplication is so that is the, uh, the same thing but it uh, when we are uh, defining something we have to give axiom so what is axiom anyone can know I mean, what an axiom is in mathematical terms or can you give any idea about what an axiom is anyone no? it is something uh, hmm. uh, we can say that you know it's a principle it is something which is you know we have to follow as it is like you cannot really prove it or Correct. Uh, you know, break. You cannot break down and then you know look at pieces. It's a rule. It's a rule. It's a rule to follow. Exactly. Exactly. So basically, we are taking something in our hypothesis. We are taking this as granted, and above this, we will build our theory. That is the point of it. So when suppose when we are learning English language, so we never question that. Uh, we never question that uh, A B C D this letter exists. They exist. Above that, the English language is built up. Right? So alphabet exists. So that is kind of an axiom. Okay. So here also, uh, in vector space, we have some axioms which are related to addition and scalar multiplication. So now we are at a point where we can define what a vector space is. So vector space is a set V together with an addition and a an scalar multiplication. So addition is defined as how addition. Addition means if we have two things, we can add it up. Right? That is an addition. So this is one point. We can add it, and then we take get another point. So this is what an addition does. So it is from v cross v to v. What does it mean? So we know what v cross v means, right? V is the set. We know Cartesian product of two sets, right? How the element will of v cross v look like? Ordered pairs. It's ordered pair, right? Uh, how the ordered pairs are defined? First Suppose element is from the yeah, yes sir. Ah, correct. First element is from the first set, and second element is from the second. Correct, correct. Yeah, so one thing I want to tell, I mean. This session should be interactive, okay? Otherwise, I will not have an impression that whether uh, it is clarified to you or not. Okay? So, it, if it is interactive more, then it will be good. Okay? Uh, yeah. So, suppose so v cross v to v. That means I am taking two element, suppose a and b, from this v, and if I add it up, I will get a plus b. So, this is another thing which should be inside the vector space. Right now, this is called closure. You have heard this in lecture. If you have seen the lecture, so this, a plus, this a plus b is from b into b. Ha, this a plus b should be inside. Right, should be inside inside, inside b. Some yeah. somewhere very inside b. So it it should be a vector inside b. It should fall inside. B. I am so, giving you an example. Okay. Suppose uh, I am taking natural number. Two natural. Uh, if I add the add any two natural number, what I will get? Natural number. Natural number. So this is the closure number. Right? When I add two natural number, I am getting another natural number. This is what closure property is. Right? Now if I take subtraction, subtraction is also the same thing, right? Uh, it is one kind of addition, right? That is subtraction. So if I take two natural number and do subtraction, 
is it always be inside dash r number no sir no no so sir may not be right because if i take 2 and 3 and if i define the subtraction as a b going to a minus b then it is not a natural number right yes, minus sir. one so it does not lie in natural so it is not closed so have you understood what closer property means yes, yes sir i understood what is closer property but it's not necessary that every time it lie between these ah, and it depends end. on the set and operation we are taking whatever the output we used to get that should be inside our vector exactly inside our space inside our, our space. space but but here yeah, minus one is not in the space master here minus one is not in the space. so it is not closed okay, okay sir okay closed. when it lies inside that suppose the addition if we define over n a b a plus b then it is closed okay. so we said closed under addition okay, okay. clear what closer is right so for vector space we need this closer property when we are defining addition a cross b to b and if we take two vectors i mean two elements from the set b and we are defining the addition the addition should lie inside the vector space that is the first thing yeah so sir if we define uh, integer to integer for the like example 2 3 mm -hmm. then it will be closer right then it will be a closer right yeah, yeah. and so if it yeah. doesn't lie inside it then it's out of the vector then we cannot define it as a vector space. yes yeah okay yeah i am i am coming to that i will give example of everything so till this portion i think it is clear now Yes, sir. What is scalar multiplication? Multiplication. Multiplying a, a vector Multiplying by a any vector by a scalar. By a constant. Yeah, when we define scalar for this course at least. So in general case, it is defined a little bit in generalized situation. But for this case, the scalar are always coming from real number. Ah. So your set of scalar is R. So you take something from R. You take some element from B and it will lie in B. What does it mean? I take some scalar, I take some vector from B, our set B. If I multiply it, it should CV. lie inside our set. See B, oh. it should lie inside B. Example, suppose I am taking R and suppose I am taking B as my Z. Someone has given Z as an example just now. Z. Now, is it always necessary that is it always inside Z? If I define like this, just multiplication. No, sir. No, sir. No, right? No, sir. If I, if I take half and take one, what I will get? Rational number. One by two. Rational. Real number. Ah. Ah. So, real number, or if you want to be more specific, it should be a rational number. Right? It is not an integer. It is not an integer. That is the point. So, it is not closed. Right. Okay. Okay. So clearly, Z will not for, uh, I mean will not be good for our purpose, right? Now suppose Q. I will go a little bit more. So you remember this picture, right? So you start with natural number, you take with Z, then there is Q, and then there is real. Remember, this is the first thing we have learned in math one. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, so now come to Q, the bigger set. Let's take some bigger set. Q. Is it always be inside Q? R cross Q? No, sir. It yes, may sir. not be, right? Suppose I take root 2. You say 3 by 4. If I multiply it, I will get 3 root 2 by 4. It is not a rational number. Correct? Yes, sir. So yes, it sir. is also not closed. So the minimum thing which we come across is R cross R to R. This is always closed, right? Take any real yes, number, sir. take any real number, if you multiply it, it will be a real number. Right? So this will always, this is closed. This satisfies the closure problem. Correct? Yes, sir. Till this question it is clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, 
now we'll go back to the definition again so what we have we have v this is a set we have addition addition is different from v plus v to t scalar multiplication it is defined as r cross v to v right this we have understood now there are some axioms which is depending on the addition and scalar multiplication axiom one what is axiom one this addition should addition be, huh, what can someone tell me what is axiom one sorry. Sir, V1 plus V2 is always equal to V2 plus V1. Yes, sir. What does it mean? It is called commutativity. Commutative. Yes, sir. Commutative. So, what does it mean? If I add two vectors, it does not matter whichever I write it at the first. Right? Order uh, can be any. Uh, any order can be anything. Right? 2 plus 3 is same as 3 plus. That is the case. Yes. Right? It does not uh, matter which order I am taking. This is the first thing that is also satisfied. Second thing. Second thing, anyone? Associativity. Associative property. Yeah. This is called associativity. What does it mean? So suppose I have three vectors. It does not matter in which order I am adding. I am adding the last two at the beginning and then at the first one, or I am adding the first two at the beginning, then at the third one. It does not matter. Right? So we usually what we understand by addition, it is exactly the same thing. This addition is exactly the same thing. Because when we learned addition in our primary schools, these are I mean inbuilt there, right? We did not bother about that, but now we have to bother about it. So suppose in primary school, it is given one plus three plus five. It does not matter if some child is doing this first and then add this or this first and then add this. So this is in built in our addition. So we are just axiomizing this, the same property, correct? So this is associated. Now the third one, this is really important. There should be a zero. Zero means what? Zero means zero is something, there should be some element inside the set. If I add any element from the set to that element, I will get back my original element. Yes, sir. Okay. This is for all V inside. Whatever element I take from the set, I should add with that particular element. So zero here is the notation Z. Because we can, I mean, can you please explain? Uh, we can think of zero like this, right? Because in our uh, integer, the zero is there, right? If I add any integer or any real number of uh, with zero, we will get back the real number, right? That's why the notation is there, zero. Okay? So this zero is basically an element from V, element from the set. It is not the origin, the real number zero I am talking about. It is a notation zero. Clear? Sir? Uh, zero is not necessary to be in V. It's a zero vector, sir. It's a zero vector. It is not the real number zero. That is zero. It. Okay. Yes, it is zero, zero vector, vector means. Vector. So can it, can, it, it can vary it with respect to the set. For different sets, zero will be different. Can you yeah. please sir, explain it with example? Yes, sir. Example. With example, sir. I will give an example, but for now, just keep it in mind that zero okay. is not the real number zero. Okay, sir. Okay. I will come to the example. Sir, if zero is uh, every entry, every component is also zero. No, that can happen. I mean, that will happen. But even there are some examples where that is not also the case. Okay, sir. Okay. I will give that example also. Okay, sir. Okay. So, yeah. I just so to... this, all this uh, axiom, uh, one minute. All this axiom, these are for all V1, V2, right? I mean, these are for all. This is really important for all v1, v2, v3. Okay. For every vector, it should satisfy. That is the point. Yeah. Uh, someone was asking something. Yes, yes. So yes. This, this zero vector can be represented in a different way, like v0 or something. Or ah, it generally, you know, it writes zero sub q in p. In general, it is written like that. Or in some book, you can see e. Zero vectors is represented as e. Okay, but 
don't uh, i mean we don't bother about such notation i will like see okay no issues in that and this is same as 0 plus v because it is already commutative we have seen so 0 plus v is same as v. yeah till this point any doubt other than what 0 is for different cases that i will come later but till this point any other doubt no sir no sir no fine fourth axiom is there should be an inverse what does it mean suppose i have a vector there should be some vector v prime so that i will get back zero. i add it i will get back my z okay so this is called inverse inverse of v and this inverse should exist for all v. Okay. So here so 0 means the number 0. No, no, no. The 0 vector. When I am talking about 0 inside this set, this is the 0 vector. What is this set? We don't know. Right? Till now, we don't know what this set is. Okay. Okay. I will come into the example, then it will be more clear. So let me write uh, remaining axiom. So next axiom is? One small dot about inverse. Sir. If inverse is negative of P, Always. It is the notation, it is negative of right? Okay. It is so, sir, in general, in, it is negative of Here we cannot generalize what we know, sir. We have to learn exactly, more. Exactly. That is the problem. That is my problem. Okay? It is more generalized thing. It is exactly the same thing you know. I mean, the axiom are built upon that exact idea, what you know. So, always you can relate with the thing you know, but we generalize it, it further. Right. So that is the point. Next, what is the axiom? Axiom is v in v. one into v. One into v equal v. So in real number we have one, right? So if I take the scalar multiplication of one with v, I will get v. So this is also for all. V. Okay. And then sixth. So this is quite clear. No? This is not very difficult. Uh, next, yeah. what is this? Multiplication. AB into V. AB into V equal to A into BB. So AB into V is A into B. What does it mean? Suppose A and B are scalar, right? A and B are two real numbers, and B is your V for all. All everything is for all. Take any two real number A and B. So you can multi uh, take the multiple of A and B, right? A B. You take scalar multiple of A B with V, right? You will get this thing. Now, first you take scalar multiple of V with B. That will give you B B. It should be same as when you take scalar multiple. So this is a vector, right? You take B and V, take scalar multiple B V. So this is now inside B. Right? Now again you are doing A and B V. Now it is your A B V. So by the both way you should come to the same point. That is the idea. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So this is the thing, and then seventh axiom. Seventh A and into A. V plus W. So A, I will write V1 and V2 same as a v1 plus a v again the same thing take addition first then do the scalar multiplication you will get a vector you take scalar multiplication with each vector and then add. you should come to the same place this is quite obvious this is what you should feel that it should happen for all a belongs to r and for all v1 v2 belongs to v2 and next the same kind of similar but with scalar right so these are axioms which i mean whatever set with this two operation if it satisfies these all these property then it will be a vector space that is the definition of vector space yeah so this is the definition and 
remember this order is kind of important i will tell you why i will tell you later but remember this order is somehow important not the whole order but at least this first four this order is somehow important okay. so can you please scroll down sir yeah yeah uh, anyway i will uh, upload this note so now you okay. can understand it okay, okay sir uh, write it down i will upload this you will get this okay fine now let's come to the example this is kind of abstract thing what i was telling till now now let's focus on some particular example that will clarify your doubt so for begin with i am starting with r2 what i have started with uh, my topic r2 with usual addition and scalar multiplication what is that what is usual addition and scalar multiplication what these things i am saying so basically r2 how the elements will look like X, y, two, two components, two x, components. Comma, y. x comma y. Exactly. So here, this is my set. This is the set. Right? Each element will look like x comma y. Right? So this is how each vector will look like. Now, how addition is defined? It is from R2. Sorry. It is from R2 plus R2 to R. 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 Right? How it is defined? Take two things x1, comma y1 plus, plus x2, x2, comma y2. How we will define? I am x1 defining addition x2. like this. Yes. X1 plus x2. Coordinate wise addition. y1 plus y2. Here, yeah. this is what addition we are defining. This is quite clear. And how I am defining scalar multiplication? It should be like this. C define? into x1 by x comma y. Any real number C, x y, C x C x C. This is how I am defining. So when I have to check something is vector space or not, always the set will be given, the addition will be given, the scalar multiplication will be given. Okay, all these three will be given. Then you have to build up a check whether the uh, it is a vector space or not. So first thing, what uh, it should strike in your mind that this addition and scalar multiplication are really closed. That is right here. Yeah? You take two elements from R2. If we do addition like this, it is inside R2, right? So this is really closed. Correct? Any doubt in this? So addition. No, no, sir, but... sir uh, here you have written like. Uh, colon and then equal to does it has some special meaning colon mean de define this is mean define i am defining it. okay so this is basically defined it's mean defined sir but better if you explain with some numbers with examples so. ah, i am coming to that i am coming ah, okay sir. so basically what here i am doing say any two vector from r2 so 2 comma 3 plus 5 comma 7 what is the addition <coughs> Seven, 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 seven. Ah, okay. Right. So this is inside R. That is my. Ten, Whatever. Ten is not inside is. this, no, sir. Huh? This ten is not inside these two vectors. No, no, no it should not no, be inside no. this vector. It should be inside R. Inside, inside, inside is not in between. The ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay. This should be inside the set. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah. So similarly for scalar multiplication, is it inside R2? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is, right? So this is till now, this is clear, right? Now, yes, if I define addition like this, is my first property satisfied? Commutativity? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How it is satisfied? So addition is x1 plus x2. This is in general I am talking about this x, y, x1, x2, y1, y2, they can take any real values, right? So, I am really doing it for all. And what happens if I take this at first and this in the second position? What I will get? x2 plus x1. x2 plus x1. y2 plus y1. y2 plus y1. Is this two hectares same? Yes. 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 Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So this was same. That's why the first property says so this is my V1, this is my V2. Yeah. So 
both situations will not be equal in all the situation. Like in if white, yes, I'm, I'm talking in real number. Like if, if this will not be equal, na, so I'm saying that. Um, I am not getting it. Can you repeat? So, so like if we put x, if y two equal minus two and y one equal one, mm -hmm. my, it's okay. So it's fine. It's fine. I mean, it is always no. It is addition. Yes. Minus two plus one is one plus minus two. Yes. Right. This is addition. I mean, this is always true. Yes, yes, yes. Can never go wrong. Right. This is just addition. Whatever addition you have learned in graduation, that is the same thing. Okay. So this is my v one plus v two. Now here is this is v two. This is v one. So this is v one plus v two, and this is v two plus v one. So you are agreeing that these two are equal. So my first axiom is satisfied. Correct. Sorry. Excuse me, sir. Sir, there uh, uh, about the about this statement, like r into r uh, r cross equals to uh, r uh, r r squared, and then c belongs to r and x comma y belongs to r squared. Huh. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's how you define your scalar multiplication. Uh, no, sorry, Cartesian product. No. C is from the first set. This is from the second set. That's how we have defined. Correct. Are you there? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah, got it. Scroll down here, please. Okay. So the next thing is second thing was V one the associative property. Right? Yes, sir. Again, take the same thing. V one as any x one y one anything. V two as x two y two. When you are not talking, can you please mute? Sugar. Mukata mukhe. Under alo kabhi mukha. Pull ma. Apa? Please unmute. I mean, sorry, mute. Yes. So V three is any six three Y three. Now for associativity, what we have to do? You have to. Take three it's three elements. V one plus V two plus V three. This is the first thing, right? So what I am saying, x one y one plus x two y two plus x three y three. I am adding these two first. What I am getting? Tell me what I am getting. X two plus x three plus x three. Comma y two plus y two plus y three. Great. Now if I add with this, this is my new vector inside R two. This is another vector in R two. Again, I am doing the same operation. What I am getting? X one plus x two plus x three comma y one plus y two plus y three. Great. Now if I do v one plus v two first and then v three, will I get the same thing? Yes. Yes, sir. Is it clear yes, to everybody? Yes, sir. Then I will not do that. Okay, so check. This is the same thing, right? So second exam is also satisfied. Now come to the third exam, which is what third exam says. There should be a zero vector. Means whatever vector I take x comma y, I should add it. So zero vector, whatever this zero vector is, it should be inside R two. So x comma y, there should be some vector, something comma something. I should get back this x comma y. What should my zero vector is? What should zero 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 comma zero zero comma zero. Yes. So this is my zero vector. Sir, so that's what I am asking, sir. Uh, it is always zero comma zero. No, it is not always zero comma zero. I will give you some. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is for this one. It is zero comma zero. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. great. Hello, sir. Is, uh, yeah. Shouldn't that be? I mean, shouldn't that be of a reverse? I mean, sign minus x comma minus y, sir. Because x comma. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sir. It's x comma. Okay, okay. Inverse. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay, sir. Thank yeah. you. So again, for inverse, every vector has should have inverse. That means this is x comma y. There should be some vector so that I will get back my zero vector. So remember what I am doing here. 
before checking the inverse we should check the zero vector if zero vector does not exist then we should not bother about inverse because it does not make any sense because it should come to this zero vector right that's why the order is important first check the zero vector then check the inverse is it clear yes sir yes sir. what i am saying because if zero vector does not exist then inverse does not make sense because inverse only makes sense when i am adding that inverse i should get back the zero vector that's why zero vector should be existed from the beginning right so at first we should check for the zero vector then we have to check for the inverse okay so what is the inverse here minus x minus y minus x minus minus x minus y. is it clear to everyone yes sir. now observe that i am not doing uh, the commutativity checking here because i have already done it in one right so i am not bothered about what is 0 plus x comma y that i am not doing again that will be said i mean it is same as 0 comma 0 plus x comma y so i should not bother about that because i have already checked this axiom at the beginning okay so that's why i have said this order is kind of important okay is it clear till this question? Any doubt till this one? Yeah. No, sir. No, sir. Oh. Everyone? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, great. Uh, rest for, uh, rest for axiom, what was that? 1 into V, any V means X comma Y, it should, it is obviously X comma Y, right? Because how scalar motivation is defined? It is CX comma CY, right? This one. Now, instead, in place of C, I am subtracting 1. What should I get? X comma Y. Okay. 1 into X, that is X. 1 into Y, that is Y. So, I am getting back my same vector. So, this is basically this axiom. 1 into V is same as V. Correct? Now, what about the rest 3? Uh, this AB is into B. AB. Uh, AB into B. A into B. B. So let's check this one. So V is my x comma y. Any arbitrary thing I am doing. So A B into X Y. What is that? A B X A B A B X comma A B Y. A B X comma A B Y. Correct. Now what is B V? That is B into X, B into x y. y. B X comma B Y. B X comma B Y. Now I am multiplying A into B V. That means A, A B into B X comma B Y. What should I get? Great. Now suppose seven. A plus B into B. Now which A into one I V1 plus V2, sir. Ah, that one was first, no? Yeah. A into V1 plus V2. So let me write that one first. V1 plus V2 equal to A V1 plus A V2. So let's take V1 as x1, comma y1, V2 as x2, comma y2, and A is any real number. So what is A V1 plus V2? So V1 plus V2 means x1, x1 plus, plus x2 plus x2. Y1 plus y1 plus y2. Right. Now what is this scalar multiplication A into this? A x1 plus A x1, comma A y1 plus A y1. B. Uh, sorry, A. This one. Y2. This one. So if I break it down, I will get AX1 plus AX2. AY1 plus AY2. Now, what if I do it separately? So this is AX1, Y1. AX2, Y2. What I will get? AX1. AX2, AY2. AX2, AY2. So this is clear. Then if I add this, I will get back the same thing, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So exam seven is also satisfied. Now, what about exam eight? A plus B into B. Uh, can you check it yourself now? Yes. Yes, sir. This is quite easy, right? So it will also satisfy. I am leaving it for you to check. So all the exams are satisfied, right? So R2 with addition, this is called usual addition. Why it is usual? Because this is natural for the addition.
usual addition and scalar multiplication right this is scalar multiplication with respect to these two operation this r2 will be a vector space what is the zero for this 0 comma 0 0 comma 0 i want answer from everyone okay uh, what is the zero uh, for, for, for this 0 comma 0 what is uh, the inverse for a vector x comma y minus x minus, minus y. So minus x comma minus y. y now is there anything special with r2 if i replace it with r3 will there be any difference no sir. no, no, sir. The same thing will go. Just three coordinates will three be there. Three coordinates, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Only that difference. Otherwise, everything, every checking will be same. Right? Yes, sir. So, these are, you can get a set of example from here. Rn, does not matter what it is. Addition yes. and scalar multiplication. Coordinate wise addition. It will give you a vector space for any n. Clear? Sir, please sir, explain it, sir, what you had said. So instead of R2, if I take R3, mm -hmm. and same thing, same addition, coordinate-wise addition and coordinate-wise scalar multiplication. The yes, same sir. checking will be go on, right? Will be going on. Same checking. Sir, for the rest of the eight idioms, no, sir? The eight axioms, right. Rest, all the eight axioms will be same. The checking will be exactly same. Only then after we can say that it's a uh, so that only after that. Okay. Yeah. What will be zero for R3? Zero comma zero. Zero comma zero comma zero. So R3 zero will be zero comma zero comma zero. Right. Correct. So this is one vector. Sir, zero vectors sir, please. Uh, so if you take x comma y comma z, what should be the zero vector? This is something from R3, right? In R3, I am talking. About. Yes, sir. You should get back x comma y comma z. So what should be your zero vector? So zero zero zero. But sir, you were saying that it's not always zero zero zero. I am not. I am coming to that. First, let me okay. finish this first. Okay. 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 Let me give you an example. Otherwise, you will always be bothered about this. Yes, sir. That, okay. that thing is bothering me so much. Okay. So R2. Same R2 I am starting with. Now I am defining my addition a little bit different way. It is from R2 to R2. R2. Uh, let me see. I am defining my addition. X1, Y1 plus X2, Y2. I am defining it as X1 plus X2. Uh, not necessarily. One minute. Let me think one not R2. I am taking this set x comma 1 okay where well, x belongs to real number this is a set I can take this set right yes yes I am defining my addition like this Correct. I can define my addition. Is this it's addition closed? No. So it's not going to be 1 plus 1, 2? No. I am not defining like that. I am defining it like this. Okay. This is my definition. I am defining okay. this. Okay. 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 okay? Take two elements. I am taking two. So, I mean, I can define that because you see, I am taking two elements from the set, right? X1, yes. comma 1, X2, comma 1. Both of them are from B. I am defining it like I am just adding the first coordinate and the remaining will be the same, the one. Okay, okay, okay. Right? So I can define it. So now this is inside V, correct? Because yes, x plus 1 plus x2 will be a real number and the second coordinate is 1. So this is inside V, correct? Yes, yes sir. It is closed. It is closed. Sir, sir. Is it clear to everyone uh, that this is closed? Yes, sir. Uh, what I want to ask you is uh, you are defining this explicitly. Um, so, is this a special vector space that you are saying wherein only the first coordinates are adding up and the one always remains one? Yes, 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 yes. So, my point was there can be, I mean, not, I mean, only this Rn type of vector space are not only the vector spaces. There are infinitely many vector spaces. 
where zeros can be anything, addition can be anything, scalar multiplication can be anything, but that eight axiom is satisfied. That was my point. Okay. Yes. Are you getting what I am trying to say? Yes, yes sir. sir. From here till this point, you know, all Rn with coordinate addition is a vector space. That is quite yes. clear to all of you, right? Yes, sir. But my point is why then why we should bother our vector space? Because we know what coordinate additions are, then why we are naming it a defined way? Why this vector space name k? Why should we bother about that? The point is there are many such things where the addition is different, where the scalar multiplication is different, but still those eight properties are satisfied. Then what we should call it? It should be a name for that. That is basically our vector space. Yes, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is scalar multiplication? How should we define that? Take R, take V. So any element x comma one, I am defining it at. So I am defining it as C x comma one. Now again, it is inside V, right? Yes, sir. So both of them are closed. Now checking about axioms. Last axiom is this satisfied? Yes, sir. All of you have pen and paper with you, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Check yes, whether commutativity is satisfied or not. Yes. What should yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. One plus x two comma one. Comma one. What if, if we change it? X two plus x one comma one. X two plus x one comma one. Okay. So this is satisfied. <laughs> Associativity. Yes, sir. I leave it why are we calling it satisfied? Huh? Why are you calling it closed? Like there, uh, closed means I mean this resultant should be inside the set. So, is it the resultant? Is it inside the set? V. Okay. Yes. That's why it is called closed. Closed means it's inside. It's taking everything inside. The closeness. That is the thing. Yes. Okay. Okay. So accessibility, I am leaving it to you. You should check on your pen and paper. Third thing, what is zero here? Take any vector. This is any vector, right? Any vector is of the form x comma one, as you can see, right? What should be the zero here, so that I am getting back my same thing? Tell me. Zero one. Zero zero. Zero one. Zero one. Zero comma one. Zero comma one. Right? Zero comma zero is not inside the set. Yes. Yes, sir. Right. So zero vector should be from V. I have mentioned it earlier. This zero vector, yes. it should yes. be from the set itself. This zero vector should be there exists zero in V. Okay, and there exists. How is it not in the set? Huh? How is it not in the set? Zero comma zero. Yes, sir. You tell Second me. Element is one. You know a set, right? How a set is defined? Yes. Second coordinate is always one. Can zero comma zero be inside okay, the set? Okay. It cannot be, right? Yeah. Now, so but sir, then, I'm not getting the third one, sir. X ah, comma yeah, one. Yeah. We yeah. we want to get output as x comma one only, no, sir. So if ah. we add zero plus zero, then uh, the output is also x. Then no. Oh, how the addition is defined? See, addition is defined like this, right? First of all, the zero comma zero is that element is inside v? Is that inside v? Zero comma zero? No. No sir. no, sir. It is not inside me, right? Yeah. So, so is there any other element which I can add with x plus one so that I am getting x comma one? No. See, the addition is defined like this. Remember, this is yes. how I am. This is because sir, we we have only one variable and we can only put the value of one variable yeah. in this and other no, variable. Let her, let her also one. understand this. Uh, have you got it? So this is how my addition is defined. This is. Okay. What I am doing, I am we adding the do past. Everything once in this. Huh. So okay. I am fixing this second coordinate. This is always Fixed. one. This okay. is always one. That's how addition we are defining. So now we are and considering only about x. So if, only if we add zero with the first element, we will get x. Exactly. Okay. And this element is inside v, right? Ah, yeah. Because something comma one. This is inside v. So clearly, this is the zero of our vector space. Is it clear? Not yes, zero. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Zero comma yes, zero is not in the set here. Okay. Right? Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Fourth point. 
what about inverse x comma 1 what is the inverse minus so that i can get comma 1 0 comma 1 exactly i should minus get back 0 comma 1 because this is my zero now so minus x comma 1 this is my inverse and it is inside b correct right minus x comma 1 is also inside b right yes yes sir yeah okay so this is my inverse now check the other properties hi 1 into v what is this how i am defining scalar multiplication Multiply Sir, I have a small question actually. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Like uh, we all know that x1 comma y1 plus x2 comma y2 should be x1 uh, x1 plus x2 comma y1 yeah. plus y2. So this why this one and one is one here. So that's why I am saying the addition. You know that is one type of thing. You know that is one type of vector space, but why this vector space is so powerful because we can define our own addition and scalar multiplication we can define it as our own and make new spaces that has some application is that uh, is that the example and it's defined in such a way uh, this is one example where, where i am defining my addition and scalar multiplication in my own way to create a vector space Okay, okay, got it. Space, which is not the usual one, which is the not the same thing you know. This is the new thing, right? This is the new addition I am defining. This is not the okay. usual addition. Correct? Thank you, sir. Sir, I mean, yeah, you mean vector space means the x comma one is only your vector space, no, sir. Huh? Oh. In this example, which is the vector space, sir? There? What I have told, what a vector space is. is the, if the condition, the eight condition is satisfied, then. Then which one is a vector space? The real number, sir. The vector space is this set together with these operations. This is all two operations. V okay. plus and scalar. This is the vector space. This whole set together with these two operations is a vector space. Okay, it is a space. Okay. It is a set yes, and two operation. This okay. all together forms a set. Okay, okay sir. Like R2 plus an addition. That is a vector space now, all together. All points of R2 with this type of operation. Coordinator addition and coordinator scalar multiplication. That is a vector space. Similarly, in this case, this set, x comma 1, this set, and these two operations. This all together forms a vector space. Clear? Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. I've understood everything you've taught till this point, but I'm still not clear what a vector is. These are vectors. These all the points of the set are vector. Okay. Every point in a set, every element of this set is a vector. Is a vector. Is it like a coordinate? So when I am talking about R2, R3, and some topic like this, then they are coordinate. This point, this all point, this together, x comma one, this is a vector. Suppose 2 comma 1, 3 comma 1, in R2, suppose 2 comma 3, 5 comma 5, 7 comma 9, all these are vectors. Okay, all points on R2 is a vector with respect to usual addition. Uh, am I clear? Sir, why do we study this? Is this important for data science? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is the base of data science. I mean, from here, we will define what a matrix is because matrix is nothing but a map from one vector space to another vector space. So suppose you have uh, a data where n variables are there. You can have, right? Suppose yes. uh, you, are, you are talking about price of some oil. Now, it depends on some uh, other constraint. Suppose five constraint. The price of oil depends on five constraint, right? The transition cost the PPRE processing cost, everything. Now you have a data like this. Everything is there. This is processing cost. This is transition cost. This is some other unit which is uh, taking the cost. So all this, now you have a data. So you can represent it in terms of R3, right? Suppose there are three constraints. Then you can represent this as a vector in R3, right? Yes, sir. 
then you can do your addition you can do your scalar multiplication whatever you like then you can map to something else you can process the data everything will come here yeah okay sir yes sir clear oh in this example what is the vector hello sir yeah hello sir yeah sir is there a way to represent this now you told no the vector space i mean which involves plus and the scalar multiplication is that i mean can you just show us in terms of uh, graphical representation yeah graph, i can how show. does it appear yeah i can show but that is not the point of this discussion i can show no but just for the understanding sake what i am talking about okay no for understanding i am asking because uh, yeah. i mean it's difficult to imagine how come a plus and the scalar product both are coming in the same vector space so that it is the same uh, thing what you are doing suppose this is 0 comma 1 okay this is one vector so what i have said what in physics we have studied the arrow joining this and this is a vector right right yes sir yes sir and suppose this is your 1 comma 0 so arrow joining 0 comma 0 and this is a vector now what the addition look like it is a parallelogram law right this is your addition right this point correct yes sir yes sir parallelogram this is actually 1 comma 1 if you add this to what you will get 1 comma 1 right this is the point okay okay geometrically it is the doing the same thing suppose you have this thing 1 comma 1 this vector you are doing scalar multiplication 3 into 1 comma 1 what you will get 3 comma 3 right it will come here you just take it three times this this and this three times you will get 3 comma 3 is it clear that this is the geometrical formula in arcu it is easier to visualize okay yes sir is it clear Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it yes, clear? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it, sir. Thank you. So, I mean, the point is, the point is. So here, you should remember the point. You don't have to bother about this arrow now. You can do it in more general sense if you just take it as coordinate, coordinates in some space, right? As vector in some space. You just add it. The usual addition, whatever the addition is defined there, you can do it. so you don't have to bother about the arrow how the vector look like you don't have to bother about that because you are interested in the data itself right that's why vector space is more powerful is it clear so in this context in the mathematical context that's why we are doing we don't have to bother about the so vectors in physical sense you have studied that it has some direction and magnitude right but here by doing all this axiom that captures the direction and magnitude you don't have to bother about those separately how the axioms is created how the axioms are assume that captures the both the direction and magnitude so you don't have to bother about that the magnitude will run in inner product space that will come in week 8 i think week 8 yeah right like week 8 then you will get a more understanding of the magnitude but till this point you can really play around with this vector just using the addition of scalar multiplication you don't have to have to bother about parallelogram law or other thing you have studied earlier okay am i clear what sir one more thing sir yeah sir yes uh, sir please example in a example of stock taking uh, as a example sir how can we define a vector space in that sir Uh, data in a data example sir how can we define the vector space in that okay suppose this is also i think taught in lecture suppose in a grocery store there are some uh, rice dal oil these three are there okay oil so you know the price suppose someone suppose you go to the shop and you bought 1 kg of rice 1 kg of dal and half liter of Oh, yeah. right. This is you, person A, person one, yes. person two went there and he or she bought two kg of rice, half kg of dal, and one liter of oil. Right. Now, suppose you want to calculate. So this is very small example I am talking about. Now imagine you are doing it with one lakh data. Right. Yes. Then it will be useful. 
now you want to know uh, in a day what is the sale of the grocery store right yes. so what you, you will do you will consider this as a vector right in r3 yes sir yes sir because you are defining it on three constraint rice dal yes. and oil you are defining this as your second vector and you will do the addition this is your coordinate addition right yes sir now you do this three this is 1.5 this is no, 1.5 no sir i am asking what is the vector space in this r3 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 with user addition and scalar multiplication oh. Okay, sir. In in what uh, vector scale we are uh, doing the calculation? That is exactly. uh, vector space. Exactly. And how you are your addition works. Right. So that matters. So here it is simple coordinate addition. That is what we have seen in the past example. Right. Okay. Uh, one yeah. one one question, sir. Sorry for interrupting. So, yeah. uh, if in place, for example, in the last. Uh, example, you have set a tuple as one, yes. a fixed quantity as one. Then, right. in the like manner, we can do that. Uh, well, in place of one, I can put it as zero. Yeah, you can. So, uh, so in that case, uh, uh, if something is multiplied by, uh, if, if those points are multiplied, for example, three zero zero. If something is if that point is getting multiplied by a scalar quantity, then that space is also a vector space because it is under uh, it is covering the uh, uh, the closure under the multiplication property. And all the eight properties should satisfy, right? Yes. I mean, okay. however, what set you take, you have to know what the addition and scalar multiplication they are. Otherwise, you cannot check. Now instead of one, one has nothing to special you have to do. You can take anything and take the same scalar addition and scalar multiplication. That will form a vector space. One is nothing special. Okay, you can take root two and do the whole thing. That will be the same. Is it clear? Uh, there is something which is very closely related to this one and has been marked as not a sub vector subspace uh, in in our activity. Uh, I will come to that. Yeah, true, true, true. true. Two. That is a subspace of R2 with usual addition yeah, scale. What, right. what is the benefit of keeping one as such and just performing the operations? Uh, because no benefit, no benefit of that. That's what I am saying. One is nothing important here. I mean, this is just why do we need to do it in terms of uh, vectors, sir? It can be done as a normal, uh, like a regular uh, addition itself. No, I mean, when it is of no, if no I importance. Use, no, no, that's what not I'm saying. I'm saying instead of one, you can take root two. Then your addition will be defined as root two, root two here, root two. That's what I am saying. I'm not saying the vector space is not important. So it could be any I'm number saying, for the matter. It could it be any, could any number, number. Then your addition will change accordingly. Right? Addition and scalar multiplication. That will change accordingly. Right? But it will always be constant on all the sides, on all the vectors. For this type of example. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, what about the next uh, two? I mean, next two, three. That that can you check? A B into X or one. What is that? Sir, A B X comma one. A B X comma one. A B X comma one. That is A B X one. Then this is again A B X one. So seven and eight, I am uh, leaving to you. This will be satisfied. So this is a vector space. So now you can see what we have learned in now. Can someone summarize it? Someone from in? Sir, may I? Yeah, go ahead. Sir, main two things I learned from this example is zero vector is not necessary zero comma zero comma like that. And inverse is not negative multi negative of vector. Minus yes, one of the second. Yes, sir. No, I am asking uh, what we have learned till now. Total, all together. Just summarize it a little bit. What have you understood from the video? Even a set in order to the set to be vector space, all this 
eight axiom should hold true along with closure property along with closure property so first of all first question is what is vector space vector space is the same along with two operation one is addition another is scalar multiplication this all together is called a vector space yes sir set together with addition and scalar multiplication correct this is first thing you need to keep in mind when you are talking about vector space in the upcoming session you always mention what your addition is what your scalar multiplication right each element of that set is your vector right that is the second point the third point is if you change your addition and your scalar multiplication that may change your zero and inverse right yes sir these three points are clear yes sir yes sir and i have given some motivation why you are doing vector spaces because it will be i mean this is vector space is basically the backbone of linear algebra wherever you apply linear algebra and it is applied in machine learning foundation machine learning techniques everywhere in cryptography every place it is applied okay so it is really Excuse me, sir and yeah can you repeat the third point sir third point is if you change your addition and scalar multiplication I mean, if you define your addition and scalar multiplication in a different way on the same set then your uh, zeros and negative I mean, inverses that will be different right okay sir. that's what we are seeing okay thank you sir. okay so even in higher mathematics if you have seen uh, in this linear algebra i mean everything boils down to linear algebra so calculation of matrices or vectors so everything boils down to that whatever you do. so that is the point uh, any doubt till this portion you can ask me they or else i will go to subspace any doubt till this point no sir no sir no sir, no, sir. So one uh, thing I will uh, I mean, point out here that try to clarify everything in week three and four. Otherwise, it will be very difficult in week five, six, seven. Yeah, also in multivariate vector space, exactly correct. I mean that's why it is in the same course. You can see. And if you have seen any questions of math two or earlier terms, you can see there was one question in every term in the end sense. That covers all the week. I mean, a single question will use all the concepts from week one to week eleven. There will be a question like that. So yeah. So that is so. Try to clarify all the doubts of week three, four. I mean, these are mainly fundamentals. So try to clarify everything here. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. Okay. So Sir, if you want to check two vectors, is an R two or R three? Like that, then we have to check all these conditions whether it's satisfying the two vectors are satisfying these conditions. Um, when I have said this statement, no, sir, I'm just uh, asking you. Huh, so you don't have to check anything that these are vectors or not. What it, it will be given, you will be given some set no, in the of operation. One minute, let me mute it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so you will be given some set you will be given some operations uh, okay hmm. now you have to ask that, i mean you will be asked that whether that is that forms a vector space or not okay. then you have to check all the axioms okay right? sir clear okay sir why am asking this there. doubt is, sir activity 1 i mean uh, 3.1 right. the first question sir <laughs> because i don't know how to answer that uh, they have given some vectors and they asked you whether these vectors represents the, the R two, R three, like that. Uh, that is quite clear, no? So, if which one? First question, sir. This is first question. No, three point one. No, three point one, sir. Okay. That's all right. Let me see what question you are talking about and whether I am giving the same. Yes, sir. The first question, sir. See, they have. Ah, this is this is quite easy. I mean, this is just suppose your V one. It has two coordinates, right? So uh, where it belongs? R two. Right. So that R2. is what you have to write here. 
this is nothing with vector space. I mean, we have not gone to vector space yet in this. Then how to check this, sir? Just checking the component is enough, sir. Ha, ha, ha. I mean, you know where this point lies. Ah. Right? You yes, know sir. where 5, 3 lies, right? Where 5, 3 lies. XY plane. Yes, XY yes, plane. yes. So it is in R2. Okay. So this is basically asking in which set it belongs. What okay. I have said, vector space is nothing but a set with some operation. Okay, sir. Right? And the element of that set are called vectors. Now, if you see a vector, you certainly know which set it belongs to. Okay. Right? Is it R2, R3, or R4, R5, or mm. R, anything you know. That is what it is checking here. Right? Yes, sir. And you don't have to check anything. V7, no, where it okay. belongs? V7. Hello, sir. Uh, in the second question, I couldn't understand why V1 square minus V2 square is uh, not making sense to pre represent vector V. So, this because is a vector, vector lower R. Which of the following makes sense and uh, represent vector V? Huh, I mean, for representing vector, what it should represent? I mean, what are the operations we have? We have only addition and scalar multiplication, right? So we are have, uh, in V square. We are multiplying uh, two. Uh, but is two. that a valid operation in vector space? Have we, I mean, till this point, have we mentioned about multiplication of two vectors? No. No, right? Uh, we have only add two vectors or scalar multiplication. We have done scalar multiplication, but we never had vector multiplication. Yes. We have never defined what uh, v is a vector. What is v square? We have never defined that. Right? Yes. Because that is not in the vector space operations. Oh, right? Yeah? Oh. Yes. Oh, fine. OK. Uh, so I think till vector space, the axioms and definition, this is clear to at least clear to all of you, right? The axioms are yes, clear, sir. sir. Hello, sir. Yeah. Subtraction is also not involved in this vector space, sir. Uh, I mean, subtraction is what? Subtraction is basically negative of addition oh yeah addition. yeah so, so we can do yeah yeah we so can put it as plus of minus, minus x2 ah, plus of minus inverse x2 inverse is so there right you remember inverse is there correct okay inverse is there suppose you are doing v1 minus v2 what you are basically doing you are doing v1 v1 plus, plus minus, minus, v2. minus v2 minus of v2 what is minus v2 minus v2, v2. v2 is the notation for the inverse okay, okay sir. so okay, in sir. this example in this example, what is minus of x comma one? In this example, what is minus of this vector? Minus x comma one. Minus x comma one. Yeah. This is yes, the sir. notation. This is the notation of inverse. Yes, Clear? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Sir, uh, can I just ask something? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is regarding the same activity question which we just discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, that first question, the second checkbox, can we quickly discuss that um, V2, V5 represent vectors in R1? Ah, V2 and V5. This does not belong to R1, right? So R1 does, does not belong to R1. There is a mistake, I think. Is it saying it is correct? No, no, I did not. I'm just trying to understand this question. No, V2 is not in R1. Okay, so V1 and V7? Uh, V5 and V6 are in R1. Right? V5. Because they are just real number. R1 means just real. Only one component. Only one component. So V5 okay. and V6 are in R1. Correct? Yes. Okay. So V1 is uh, not just one point. So V1 is one zero. Okay. I think I read it differently, sir. I think I'm clear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I have doubt in activity 3.2. What is your doubt? So in question number 7, 8, 9, 10, I don't know how to pull the question and what it is saying. Uh, have you understood what I have said till now? Yes, sir. Still, you cannot do this. I mean, can you go back and try once again or no? This 7, 8, 9, 10 you are talking about, right? Right, sir. But this I is kind of the thing which I have just now discovered, just now said, the last example. 
see here addition is how x1 plus x2 y1 plus y2 last quadrant is fixed right right now can you see the similar thing which i have said right now yes sir the see here how the vectors look like the first two quadrants are there and last one is fixed right sir right that's how i am defining in r2 So, so our vector space is x, y belongs to R and and C is constant. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Instead of one, there is C. Okay. Right. Now right, can sir. you do that? Oh, so sir. Here right. V one is so here V one is one two one comma two comma two and V two is zero comma three comma two. And the addition is defined as x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2, comma c. So here c is two, right? Because z is two, defined z by two. So okay. what is addition of v1 plus v2? Oh, sir, one, five, and two. Exactly. Now try the all the problems. Now we'll get okay, you. Okay, sir. Thank you, yeah? sir. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I mean, whatever. There is in the assignment that are not outside the syllabus. That is exactly just your thing in the right direction, and that you have to develop somehow. Okay? Yeah, Vina. Uh, sir, activity one, sir, question number eight, options are second, uh, third, and fourth, sir. Mm, I really don't like to discuss activity. Basically, these are given to you to try. Which one? This one. Yes, sir. Options, sir, third. I am. I have not defined subspace, so let me come to subspace and then I will go back. Okay, sir. Right. Okay. Sir. I will. I will do subspace now. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let me go to subspace, right? So till vector space, I think more or less you have an idea, right? What a vector space is, what vectors mm -hmm. are, how you do additions and all this, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now, what is subset? Subspace. So when you have learned set. You have learned what a subset is, right? What is a subset? Subset I am talking about in maths one. All its elements come from the All set. All the elements of subset. Set, set inside, inside set. some element. part of set. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Part of that set sits inside that set. Right? So suppose this is a set, something which is inside that, which can be the whole set itself, right? Correct. It can be the whole set itself. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when we are doing vector space, we have a set along with two operations, right? This was a vector space. This is the addition, and remember this is scalar multiplication. That what we have. This is called what is the vector space? Scalar multiplication, right? Then. Suppose W is a Hello. subset of V. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. Okay. Right. Uh, suppose W is a subset of V. I mean, am I audible, no? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, That's it. I am calling it as W. Now, so W is a subset. That is clear. Now, when we call this subset as a subspace, we call this subset as a subspace if all the axioms of vector space will be satisfied by W itself with the same addition and scalar multiplication. So, these elements of W, they are inside V, right? And we know how to add elements of V, how to add elements of Uh, how to do scalar multiplication with elements of v so we know how to do addition and scalar multiplication here right give, let me give you an example suppose r2 with usual addition and scalar multiplication that means quadrantoid addition and quadrantoid scalar multiplication uh, i should write it again so that you don't forget this is the addition and This was the scalar multiplication. Correct. This was a vector space. Now suppose I am taking 
this thing is set x comma zero, which is x axis, right? I am taking only this set. Someone was mentioning it in the last example. So this is one subset I am taking. So W sits inside. This is V. This R2 is my V. W sits inside V. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Sir. So W is subset yes. of R2. That is clear to everyone. Correct. Now, what subset? So can I add two elements here inside W? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How can I add? X one plus X two comma zero. X one plus X two comma zero plus zero. X one plus X two comma zero. Right? This addition I am taking. Right? Exactly this it. What is scalar multiplication here? C X comma zero. C X comma zero. Observe that when I am adding two vectors from W. I am getting another vector inside W, right? Yes. Yes. When I am doing scalar multiplication with the vectors from W, I am getting another vector which is inside W, correct? Because this is also inside W. This is also inside W. Yes. Right. So the same addition and same scalar multiplication is closed under W. Is this statement correct? Yes. 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 So same addition. And same scalar multiplication is closed, right? Now, what about the other eight properties? Will W be a vector space? What about the other properties? Should we have to check that, or that is obviously true? Can anyone true, sir. Well, obviously, right? but true. Right? Because this is usual addition in the. Ha, because this is the same addition for this vector space, the original one. Yes. Or is for original one, if it is commuted, then obviously for this element also it is commuted. Because you remember when I have defined the axioms, I have mentioned that is true for all v, all vectors in the vector space, right? And all the vectors of W are inside that whole vector space. This is the my whole v. This is my W. So these these vectors are obviously inside the whole vector space. So if something is satisfied for all element of V, then obviously that will be satisfied for all those elements inside W. Correct? Yes, sir. So then, then, that, my, that, sir, is, then, yeah. yeah, tell me. Sir, then why you say that addition and scalar multiplication? Why? Then why you Anything? check that uh, scalar uh, multiplication and addition? Because it is also inside that uh, set V. I am not getting what you are saying. Can you say it again? There are some noise coming from your head. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, now we are audible. Sir, then why you check that uh, it is also inside that uh, superset? Then uh, addition and uh, multiplication will also be true for it. Then no, 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 no. That is the point. See, addition may go outside the set. Suppose I am giving you an example. Suppose I am taking W one. Okay, I am taking this set W prime. Which is all this type of element x zero and zero y, where x and y are from R. all this element. Okay. Basically, I am taking union of x axis and y axis. Okay, union all those points which are on x axis, all those points which are on y axis. I have taken all those points. This is a subset of R two, right? Yes. Yes. Is it clear to everyone that this is a subset of R2? Yes. yes. Right. Now, is addition closed here? No, sir. No, sir. Why? Because x comma y is not an element of W dash. It's not. Suppose I am taking one comma zero. This is inside W prime, right? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 0,1. That is also inside double prime? Yes, sir. Yes, no, no, no. I add this two. No, this is so not inside one. double prime. Why is that? Yes, it is that. It is, it is there. So if I add this two, what I will get? 1,1. Is it inside double prime? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Not inside double prime. So addition is not close here. So the closure of addition is really important here for substance. Now once it is closed, the other property will obviously be satisfied. But one more catch is there. Zero should be inside that space. Same zero. Otherwise it will not be a suspense. Is zero here? Does zero belong to W? This W. Does zero belong here? What was zero for the original vector space? So zero comma zero. Zero comma zero comma zero. The usual one. Yes, yes. Is this is this inside W? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is inside W. Correct. And all the other properties, which are basically commutativity, associativity of addition, that will obviously hold. Right? Because that holds for all the elements of original vector space. So we don't have to bother about that. Zero we have checked. As zero is there and it is commutative and everything is, I mean, it is closed under addition. So obviously inverse will all already fall in the picture. Right? Inverse will also be inside. Right? Because so we have to check for only three properties. Zero, exactly, zero exactly. addition and... Exactly. Because Inverse is also in the there, they are how I can assure that because this cx is there, no? So minus of x comma zero, that is basically minus x zero. So it is inside w because this this already we have checked the closer. So inverse will also be inside that. And the last four property that is using the scalar multiplication and addition, all those four properties will also be satisfied because there is nothing to check. That is true for all real numbers and all vectors of the original vector space. So only three things we have to bother about. Whenever you are you have to you have given some subset of a vector space, you have to given some subset of a vector space W, you have to check three things. First, look at whether zero is there or not. Okay. Zero. This is the first thing you have to check. If zero is not there, then don't bother to checking anything. Okay. Second thing, check the addition. Take two vector W1 and W2, check whether they are inside W or not. Third thing, scalar multiplication. Take a real number, take something from W, check whether CW is inside W1. These three things you have to check. If you have to check these three things, then obviously W will be a vector space. And that's why we call this is a subspace. Subspace means it is a subset plus vector space. You have this big thing, V, it sits inside that, this is W. So obviously the same addition will work here, same scalar multiplication will work here, but you have to check for the closer thing. So this is the closer thing, this and this one. And you have to check whether zero lies here or not. And all the other axiom for vector space will automatically satisfied because that is satisfying inside V for all element of V. So obviously for the elements of W, it will be satisfied. So this is a vector subspace. Sir, uh, yeah. sir, can you give an example where zero vector is not in the uh, subset and all? All other two addition and multiplication properties is satisfied. No, that will not be the case. I mean, only basically if you get these two, then only it is enough. But I am mentioning zero because for some spaces it's quite clear that zero is not there, so you don't have to bother about the other two. But as this is there, zero must be there, no? Because you can take C as zero. So, sir, why we are checking for zero? Because in some cases it is quite obvious that. Zero is not there, then you can clearly say that it's not a suspense for the beginning. But you don't have to bother about this. Too. This okay. is for, I mean, for a shortcut purpose, maybe you can say. Okay. Okay. Sir. If I just give you an example, suppose I am giving you W like this, uh, one comma x. 
or 1 comma y is a such that y is inside r is it a subspace of r2 no sir no because no. zero is not there you don't have to bother about the addition and all this zero is not there. right okay sir clear that's why i have mentioned it but anyway these two are enough Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, because uh, we are already dealing with only with uh, the vector space which is inside R two, R three, and all this. That's why if you check only these two, then it is enough. For defined cases, the case may be different. There are some other vector spaces which is not in the course. We don't need that. But that's why I have mentioned these three. But for your case, if you check addition and scalar multiplication, that is enough. But it is better to keep in mind that check for zero first because that may give you something okay is it clear so we have to check the zero by uh, the actual uh, vector space sir ha ha you have to take the original zero of the vector space and see that whether it is there or not. okay okay because you are using the same addition so zero should be the same thing yes yes no? sir yeah so we can say if the vector space is x comma zero comma one, then then the the zero of the vector space would be zero comma one. X. Yeah, what is your vector space? What is addition? I have explained this till now, but now we are asking this question. No, sir. Speaking about the zero vector here. Yeah. Zero vector where? What is your vector space? Tell me your vector space first. I am right. X com x comma two, then the x x comma two where x is inside R, right? Right, sir. And zero comma two zero comma two is the zero vector of the sub of the vector. I have not. I have. I don't know what your addition is. Tell me the addition first. A usual addition. Usual. Usual addition means yes. coordinate wise, right? Right, right, sir. So x comma two plus X two comma two equal to what is that? X one plus X two comma two. It is usual addition usual. is four, no? It yeah. is not usual, right? Yes, sir. So this is the addition you are defining. Right. And yes, sir. with respect to this addition, zero comma two is the zero vector. Okay. Okay. So clear why I am saying this? When you are asking about something is zero vector or not? You should mention what is your addition. If you say that this is with respect to usual addition, usual addition is four, and this addition is not closed, so it is not a vector space. So we don't have to bother about zero, because this is not a vector space to begin with. Correct? Right? Oh. Because addition, this is not inside the V. So right. what you are doing? You are doing your own addition. You are defining it as. Well. Now you can see check whether it is a vector space. And still, you have to mention what your scalar multiplication is. I hope you are giving this as my scalar. Right, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So till this point, is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Zero for W will be zero too, sir. Here it is V. What is your W now? Mention what is your W. Sir. Uh... Sir, whatever the W will be, sir, I am asking the uh, zero for the W should be zero two or ah, it is according to zero. W. Right. Yes, it should be zero comma two. Sir. Exactly, that is the same zero of the original. Yes, yes, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, any other doubt, uh, sir? Uh, like uh, the previous example you, uh, which you gave uh, was uh, one comma y uh, and y belongs to R. There, uh, it's not a vector space. No, it is not a vector space, right? Because uh, the x-axis is uh, not zero. It will not be. That's why. Which example are you talking about? I guess uh, you erase. Uh, ah, this one, right? I have mentioned something like this. One comma y. Yes. Y so I am saying the zero vector is not there. With respect to usual addition. And scalar multiplication. So, what is a zero vector inside R2 with respect to the addition and scalar multiplication? 
what is the zero vector inside r2 zero zero comma 2 with respect to usual addition and scalar multiplication zero comma zero zero comma zero zero comma zero so zero comma zero you know does it belong to this w prime no sir no no, no because so it is, is not a subspace is it clear yes but the second option the, the second example if comma 2 it will be like here addition is different here yeah, addition is different here yeah, addition is different so for each question they used to define sir this is addition yeah, this it is, is it will be written what is the addition what is your addition on what is your scalar multiplication otherwise you cannot do uh, this vector space first we need okay. to understand what is the addition and multiplication sir yes is it clear? Okay, okay, sir. Got it, no? This is not very difficult. I mean, you are thinking it like that, but is, this is this is quite simple, but it is it is a bit abstract that I know. But you have to get hang out of it. Okay, sir. So it means that there are two kinds of R2 is a vector subspace of R3. So does R2 belongs to R3? No, sir. No. No, right? Yeah. What? It doesn't belong. Tell me. To... It doesn't belong to R3. Huh. But what we can say, suppose you take R3 with this usual addition and scalar multiplication, right? Okay. This is usual, coordinate wise. Okay. Coordinate wise. Suppose I am defining W like this. Okay. This belongs to R2, right? R3, right? Yes. This is a subset of R3. Yeah. Because the points are coming from R3. Yeah. Right? And yeah. is this a subspace? Is W a subspace of R3? Yes. Is it clear to everyone? Yes. Yes, sir. So. Can some of one of you tell me why it is a subspace? Yeah, X and Y belongs to R, uh, the sub, uh, zero vector of R3 is 0, 0, 0. So, X, right. X and Y can take 0 and 0 right. and R3 is that coordinate is 0. So, can be a subset. Yeah. Ah, then other two properties, addition and scalar multiplication? Yes, yeah, since it follows coordinate wise. Uh, ah, as it is following coordinate wise, so addition will be closed and scalar multiplication will also be closed. So, start coordinate will be 0. Right? So, this is a subspace of R3. Now you can visualize it kind of, it looks like R2, right? Because it is a pain inside R3. Yeah, yeah. So this is your R3, if you take a look, and this is your X5 plane, correct? Yes, sir. This is kind of R2, not, but not exactly R2. This is a vector space which is similar to R2. So later you will come to know this is isomorphic to R2. Isomorphism is one phenomena. So we can tell that this subspace is isomorphic to R2, but this is not exactly R2. Okay. Is it clear what I am saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So that's sir. how it is. Okay. Sir, I don't understand. Huh? No, sir, please repeat it. Which one? Last one. Is the more, uh, you tell me. Uh, R3 with respect to user addition and scalar multiplication. Is it a, is it a vector space? R3 with respect to usual addition, usual addition means coordinate wise addition and coordinate wise scalar multiplication. Is it a vector space? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now I am taking a subset W. How I am taking W? X, comma, Y, comma, 0. I am taking all such points where X and Y coming from real number. So is it a subset of the R3 first? Yes, is it a sir. subset of R3? Is it a subset of R3? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. yes. Now, first question. Now I am checking whether it is a subspace or not. Okay. Yes, so sir. does 0 belongs here? 0 of R3 belongs to W? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is 0 of R3? 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. So it belongs to R3. So 0 is there. If I add 2, x1, y1, 0, and x2, y2, 0. What I will get with respect to usual addition? 
x1 plus x2 comma y1 plus y2 y1 plus y2 comma 0 0 comma 0 0 does it belongs to w yes sir yes sir yes correct now if i take scalar multiplication what i will get cx cx comma cy comma 0 comma 0 is it does it belongs to this is also yes sir yes yes sir so this is a subspace right this three property we have to check so this is a subspace the answer is yes correct yes sir so yes, how sir. it look like this is this surface right this is my x axis this is this is my x axis this is my z axis it is already muted okay hello sir Ah, one minute, one minute. Let me finish this. Then okay. So this is my R three, right? X Y Z coordinate, right? This is X comma Y comma zero. That means this is the X Y plane, right? This plane, yes. correct? Yes, because Z is zero. Where Z is zero, exactly. Where Z is zero. So this is a subspace. Now, it this subspace. This is nothing but your X Y plane. So, this looks like R two. But this is sitting inside R three. So I am saying that R two as it is. R two means R two means the points are x comma y, right? X y minus y. This is my R two. Yes. But these two sets are not exactly equal, right? This set and this set. Because this has three coordinates for each point. We have three coordinates because it is sitting inside R three. So these two subset or these two set are not. Exactly same in principle, but they are similar, kind of similar like this because R one is zero, right? So in later week you will come to know that this is uh, there is an isomorphism between these two. So R two and this W will be isomorphic, but we don't have to bother about that now. But my point was R two is not a subspace of R three, but there is a space W which is, we can define like this, which is a subspace of R two. Is it here? Okay, sir. Here. Plus Z is zero, so anyway we will get the same compass to come. Exactly. Okay, sir. Okay, so till suspense, I think it is clear to everyone, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have a general. I have a general. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, is it always necessary that always the last coordinate will only be zero? In case of say for example like a five di five dimensional vector like you tell no the grocery store example suppose there are some five coordinates in that vector uh, is there a possibility that uh, uh, multiple coordinates could become zero or the initial coordinate could become zero or, or is it like always the last one will will be zero like is it a is there any specific condition that only the last one should be zero or even first second or Whichever coordinate be. Tell me, this is a subspace or not? About three. Are you there? Okay, so the addition becomes yes, sir, yes, sir, answer, sir. So addition becomes like uh, x one plus x two comma zero comma z one plus z two, right, sir? Exactly. And the scalar multiplication will be c x comma zero comma c z. So is it a subspace? Yes. It is a subspace, sir. I am asking multiple zeros are also allowed, or like that. I am asking. So, first of all, this zero should not be at the last. That part is clear, right? No, but uh, the above example you told zero uh, x comma y comma zero only of x y no, sir. I mean zero comes at last, no? Yeah, but here so zero is be... in the middle. My point is. Yeah, yeah, that's what. So this I understood, sir. Zero can come in any position. Am I right, sir? Yeah. Okay, so multiple zeros are also allowed. Then is it a subspace? Yeah, it becomes like a two x one plus x two comma zero comma zero and c x. Yes, a subspace. It's a subspace. So what is this? What are what is going going behind? So in this case, y is zero. That means it is the x z plane. If you have x y z. So first, I have given example of x y plane. Now this plane, this w prime, this is basically your x z plane. This plane, this is also a subspace. What is this one? 
This is nothing but your x-axis. This is nothing but your x-axis. Directly on the axis. Okay. Ah, this is just that. your x-axis inside R3. Right? Yes. So if you take inside R phase for the matter. Exactly. It is not necessary that you want our dimension. I don't want to mention the dimension because dimension has a meaning in vector space. That is really crucial. I will come to that in week four. But okay. suppose in R two, when we are talking about this x comma zero, what is that? That is your x-axis inside R two, right? This is your x-axis inside R two. Similarly, this is your x-axis. This double double prime is x-axis inside your R three. No, that's what I am asking, sir. I mean. The dimension, whatever, like the initially the subspace, what we have defined is with respect to three dimension. But the answer, I mean, like the output is coming only with respect to x axis. So that is fine. Is that okay? Like that, I'm asking. I mean, it's okay to start with the three dimensional vector, but end of the day, output it lies only on the x axis. So that is this is the subspace of that. That can be lesser dimension. That is fine. Okay, so that is okay. Okay, that okay. Is okay. That's Obviously. what I want to do. I mean, uh, let me finish. Uh, I mean, it will always be of lesser dimension or equal dimension. Right? Equal dimension okay, means this is the whole space. So first of all, I have not defined what dimension is. That is the issue. So dimension you will learn at week four. Okay, dimension okay, has a sir. meaning. Okay. So then you can understand it more better. Right? But for now, okay, okay. Sir. Suppose you consider your R three as a larger space. And the subspace is sitting inside there, so it must be smaller. Either it is the whole R three, or it must be smaller. So either it is x y plane, x z plane, or some other plane which is passing through origin. All this can okay, be possible. Sir, got it, got it. Right? So got, got it, it, got it, sir. Got it, yeah. sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Got it. Yeah, Sujay. Sir, uh, please go to that page, sir. Mm -hmm. You are ready. Sir, uh, yeah. uh, you were saying about homomorphism, like something. No, no, I don't want to mention that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, what's the term? Sir, I didn't understand what what was the. No, no, that is not needed. Saying... I am saying there is something called isomorphism. Okay, so isomorphism. In, okay. Yeah, in later class you will come to know that this W, this W, this one, and these are two. These two are vectors. These two are isomorphic w. vector space. Uh, w or double prime is there, sir. Come down, sir. Please come down. Scroll down, sir. W or double prime is uh, isomorphism to R one, sir. Ha. W double prime is isomorphism to R one. Exactly. Okay. But so, I don't uh, want to focus on that because you don't know what isomorphism is, what a transformation is. So that will come to later weeks. So for now you can remember that these are quite similar subspaces, similar thing. Okay. Is it clear to everyone or any doubt in this point? Yeah. Clear, sir. Just clear, sir. Clear, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, so, sir. Yeah. Sir, how to check this subspace with respect to matrix? There are some activity yeah, questions. Yeah, I, I, I was going to describe that. Okay. So now, till this point, we have seen some example. All the example are inside R cross R cross R. I mean R two, R three, R four, all these. And subspaces are also inside that. But there are some different type of subspaces, which are called matrix spaces. Suppose M M cross N. Okay. Say M two cross three. What is this? In your first week, you have learned this. How the elements of this set look like? A Two rows, three columns. Two rows, three columns. Three columns. Okay, so let me write this. A four, a five, a six, a eight. So, suppose I am taking two elements from this set. This is the first element, D one. And this is the second element D two, which is so D one, D two, D three, D four, D five, D six. And you know what matrix addition is, right? Yes, sir. It is basically A one plus B one, A two plus B two, A three plus B three, 
A4. A4. B5. This is right. And you yes, know sir. scalar multiplication for matrix also, right? Yeah. What is that? CA1, CA2, CA3, CA4, CA5, CA6. So all let's see. Now with respect to these two operations, addition and multiplication. And this is Mat scalar multiplication of matrix. This will form a vector space. You can check all the axes. Yes, sir. Yeah, this will form a vector space. This m m cross m, whatever the value of m and n are. So suppose I am taking m two plus three r. What I have taken? What is the zero for this matrix? Zero for this vector space? Zero matrix. Zero. Zero. Two by three matrix zero. This one, right? Okay, fine. So this is a vector space, and zero will be like this zero matrix of m cross n order. Correct. This is the vector space. Clear? Yes, sir. So suppose I am taking m three cross three. This is also a vector space. All three cross three matrices, right? Yes. Sir. This is my original vector space with usual addition and scalar multiplication. Here, usual mean the matrix addition and matrix scalar multiplication, right? Clear? Till this point, is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, okay, fine. Now, sir, every yeah. usual uh, matrix or uh, coordinates are uh, vector space until it is defined spatially. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Even if it is not defined, it will be mentioned that it is usual. Okay. It will be mentioned. No, sir. I am asking. Every usual is already a vector space. Not, not every usual is already a vector space. Right? Usual means every usual addition for this yes, coordinate yes, wise yes, and yes, right. Yes, right. Yes, yeah. Uh, so now I am taking a subspace W. Suppose it is I am taking all upper triangular matrices. So it will look like this. Correct? Yes, sir. Such that this all these six element. So this is a subset of V. It is clear W is a subset of V. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if I want to check whether this is subspace or not, what I have to check first? Whether zero belongs to here or not? Does zero belongs to here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is that zero? Zero, 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 zero. So it belongs to W. If I add two such matrices from this W, now my each vector is basically one matrix. Understand? Yeah. Now, as I have said, each element of the set is a vector. Now my each vector is a matrix. Correct? Mm -hmm. So I have taken this is my first vector from W. I am taking another vector from W. If I add these two. What I will get? So each row, each element is considered as vector. No, no. Each element of the mm, ha, each element of the set is considered as vector. So this is one vector, this is one. Okay, matrix. Okay. Because okay. here my set is set of matrices. So each element is a matrix, and each okay. matrix is a vector. If it is a vector space. Right? Okay, sir. Okay. So what is the addition of these two? A1 plus, A1 plus B1, A2 plus B2, A3 plus B3, 0 plus yes. 0, 0, A4 yes. plus B4, A5 plus B5, 0, 0, A6 plus B6. Okay. Does it belong to W? Yes, sir. So this is also an upper triangular matrix, right? Yes, sir. So it belongs to W. Similarly, for scalar multiplication, if I do this, what happened? Still, it is a subset, sir. So it is a subspace. Mm -hmm. Subspace, sorry. 
So this again is the upper triangular matrix. And it belongs to W. So obviously the set of upper triangular matrix is a subspace. So W is a subspace of any matrix. Sir, what is the difference between subset and subspace? Have you joined right now? I joined a little while ago. So this session is already streamed. Can you go back and see? Because I am discussing this point. Okay. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah, so we have another stat session also, sir, at 8 o'clock. Yeah. So basically, to give you a brief idea, subset you know, right? Yes, sir. Uh, subset, what is the subset? Uh, means if we have a set of something, then if the elements, some elements of that set are there in another set, then that set is known as subset. Suppose this is your whole set, this is what is inside, which is a subset, right? Now yes. here, this bigger one is my vector space, the set which sits inside that, and it is also a vector space, it is a subset plus a vector space. When things okay. go to R3, then it is a subspace. That I have also. Yes. I am saying it should sit inside some sub uh, vector space and it itself is a subspace. Itself is a vector space. Then we call it vector subspace. Okay, sir. Clear? Yes. Clear, no? Yes, sir. Clear. Yeah. So suppose inside R3, if I consider this set, as I have mentioned earlier, this is a subspace. Okay. This is inside R3. This is a subspace. Yeah. Similarly, suppose inside R2, I want to give an example. So I can give this as my example. Okay. This is a subspace. Clear? No, sir, uh, this. Sir, yeah. uh, here instead of 0, if you uh, put 2, then it will no longer be a uh, it is no longer subspace with respect to usual addition. Okay, okay. Uh, but if you uh, redefine the addition, then uh, then then you have to change. Then you have to change. Oh, okay. okay. So, 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 are you different? Huh? So, so W and R R two. So, which way is the same? So, we are going to do it. So, we are going to do it. So, we are going to do it. W subspace of R2. Huh. Okay. W subspace of R2. Okay. Sir. Now, <coughs> suppose I am taking this one inside R2. Can you check whether it is a subspace or not? Does it a subspace? No, sir. It's yes, not sir. a subspace. Yes. No, no. It's not a surface. Who is saying it is not a surface? Yes, it is. Sir, thank you, sir. I have another session. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. So we have start session, sir. So thank you, sir. Yeah, those who want to leave, you can leave. Okay, so thank you. Okay, sir. so before leaving, just uh, do me a one favor. Okay. So I am giving you the form because this I have to keep track somehow. Can you just fill this form and then go to the session? I am putting it there. Just before leaving, uh, fill the form and then. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah, so who is saying that this is not a subspace? Sir, sir I'm saying there is no zero now. Is, is it? Zero comma zero does not belong here? Okay, okay. Sir, I am saying it because uh, in the second thing, the second variable, X will take only the value of zero, but we can take like one, two. No, I mean, but it would no, not belong. All, okay, first of all, zero belongs to W, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Now, uh, does addition hold? So here both are same, X one, and here both are same, X two. What about that? X one plus X two, X one plus X two. So does not it belong to W? It is belong to sir. Belong to w. Not belongs necessary. To w, right? This is belongs to W, right? Yes, sir. Uh, anyone has any doubt in this? Yes, sir. 
that is does not belong to w sir but x1 plus x2 uh, is it uh, may no. or may not be equal to they will always be real equal, equal na here where zero comes in the picture i am saying x comma x so both coordinate are same that is the point right okay so how this set look like 0 comma 0 half comma half 1 by root 2 comma 1 by root 2 3 comma 3 all those point for which x and y coordinate are same if i add two such point what is the result the result will be the point where the both the coordinates are same right is it clear to everyone yes sir Yes, sir. Any doubt? Anyone has any doubt? Sir, is it recorded session? Yeah, it is recorded session. Okay. And this is also belongs to W, right? So it is a subspace. Okay. So today I am ending the session by saying this thing. I will explain in the later, or you can think of it. For R two, we have three types of subspaces. One is the zero subspace itself because it contains only the zero vector. It is a subspace and it is a vector space. Just the zero vector, the zero comma zero. This point only, one single time. So this is a vector space with respect to usual addition and usual addition and scalar multiplication. So this is a subspace. Any line passing through origin. Why this is passing through origin is important. Anyone can tell? Because it because it is a vector space, so it has to pass through origin. Exactly, zero comma zero should be there, right? So any line passing through origin and R two itself, the whole set. Only these three are possible case of subspaces. Zero comma zero, any line passing through origin and R two. See this line, this W. This is basically your x-axis, so it is a line passing through origin, right? What is this line? This line is basically y equal to zero. This line. What is this line? This line is y equal to x. This straight line, right? So instead of x, you can take m x. That is also a subspace. Y equal to m x. Correct? Is it yes, understandable? Sir. What I say? Yes, sir. sir, but instead of saying any line passing through origin, we can say that uh, x comma x means two elements are equal. No, y equal to x. Y equal to huh? x can also that be there. That is not necessary. But you can take x plus y equal to five. Uh, what sir? That I is don't... not passing through origin. No? Yeah, but zero zero is already mentioned in the first point zero zero. Then we will say that x comma x means two points are equal. That is not I'm necessary. Not what you I'm not exactly getting now what you all are saying. Uh, Sir, okay. there is one confusion for any line. They need to understand that uh -huh. for any line to be qualified as a subspace, it needs to have zero zero as a Vector space, so only the yeah. line which will pass as, through as, 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 that as, as, only will have a zero zero. So uh, there is no exactly. question of any other line passing. Exactly. Is it clear to everyone? Is this no, sir. What are you? No. What did she it's say? I don't understand. Okay. Let me clarify once again. I am saying what are the possible subspaces of R two. So if I say take W as only this point, only this set, with usual addition as scalar multiplication, is it a subspace? Is it a subspace? Yes. Is it clear to everyone? Yes. Sir. Only one point is there, zero is there, and all the axioms will be satisfied because only one element is there, zero. So it is a subspace of R. This is the first type. This is type one. What is type two? Type two, I am saying any line passing through origin. So what it will look like? Any line passing through origin means x comma m x. These are the line passing through origin, right? Whatever value of m means, this is the subspace, right? Ah, slow, correct. So instead of m, whatever real value you can take, it will be a subspace, correct? Is it clear? Question is, question is why you are restricting to pass through origin only? Because it should contain zero comma zero. 
sir you have already space. mentioned 0 comma 0 in first point difference space that is difference space this is w1 this is w2 is w2 a subspace if i am taking w3 as this x comma say x plus 3 is it a subspace no sir not at all sir let me not then also one first of all who uh, are asking this Now one minute, sir. Okay, is it a suspense? W three? Is no, it a W three? Yes, sir. No. Why? Why? Because, Because if you, if you put you X uh, zero in the place of X, then you will get uh, three. But why? Coordinate? Is it clear that it is not a suspense to everyone? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, I am giving you yes, different sir. example of suspense of R two. W one is one example that has nothing to do with W two, W three, and all this, right? Now suppose I am taking you W four, x comma four x. Is it a subspace? Yes, sir. Very good. Yes. This is a subspace, right? Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, who was asking the doubt at the beginning with uh, Muskan? Is it no? So, uh, sir. Our set is like R two, right? The actual ah. definition. If we can show that again, for ah. which we are looking for subspaces, it is the mm -hmm. uh, in that uh, uh, it says x comma y. Hmm. Right. So Correct. this uh, I, I understood W four is a subspace. Correct. Uh, uh, x and four uh, x, ah. but W three x comma x plus three. Cannot hmm. be a subspace. So, hmm. which of our three laws of subspace does it not follow? Like uh, zero is not there. If we put zero, then it comes zero comma three. No, that does not matter. I am saying zero comma zero. Can zero comma zero be known to W three? Um, no. No, right. We can we we can never get zero in the y coordinate. Exactly. That is the point. Ah, uh, we okay. can get, but uh, if we put x equal to minus three, we cannot get. Can you get zero comma zero? Yes, please. Yeah, in that case, we get. Uh, okay, but we can never get zero comma zero. It will be minus. It will be minus three comma zero, right? Yes, exactly. Minus three zero. We cannot ah, get. So you zero. can never get zero comma zero, right? Yes. Uh, Okay, sir. I want. Yes, sir. Yes. And that's why uh, any line passing through the origin becomes exactly. a subset. Exactly. Each line which is passing through origin that will form a separate subset, subspace. Okay. There are infinitely many subspaces. What? Right? But sir, in the second condition, you said that zero zero will be always there, na? Then why to uh, say that? Because sir, in second uh, it is passing through origin, so it will contain zero zero. Then why to uh -huh. uh, mention separately that zero zero is the subspace and this is not a straight line. This is just a point. This is just point zero comma zero. This is a separate subspace. This is not a straight line. This is just origin. This is just the point origin. This is a separate subspace of with the zero vector. This is only the zero vector. Okay. This is zero vector space. We are talking of three different cases. I think, sir, they are mixing case one and case two. No, so no, they are not talk... doing that. They are not doing that. They are doing something else. This is you. I have understood what this vector space is. Means from starting from origin and ending at origin. It is just not starting and origin. Not that. It is just zero. The zero vector space. It has only one element that is zero comma zero. No other vectors are there. Clear? Okay. This is that vector space. Vector space with one element, zero comma zero. No other elements are there. And it obviously satisfies all the eight condition, right? No, sir. I said that geometrically, it is starting from zero comma zero and ending at zero comma zero. That is the one vector you are talking about. I am talking about the whole space. Is there any other vector in this space? No. So this is only zero comma zero, right? But uh, if you take uh, W to be 
x comma two and w one is zero comma zero. Uh, will w one be a subset of w? W is x comma two. X belongs to real number. Ah, and zero comma zero is it? No sir, w one is zero comma zero. What you are saying? This is only one set. Is it only one uh, set? Another, yeah. Another uh, space is W one. Mm -hmm. Zero comma zero. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, W one is a subset of W or not? Not really. First of all, tell me, is W one is a subset of X comma two? Uh, I no. think no, sir. Uh, then, then it cannot be a subspace, no. And then forget that this is not a vector space itself, right? This is, is this a vector this space not, with usual addition and scalar multiplication? That will be a similar case like W three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But but if we uh, if we predefine it like uh, x plus two plus y plus two, then the separate case. Here, what I have mentioned, here I have mentioned with usual addition and scalar multiplication. Okay, sir. Right? Okay. Right? Then 0 is always 0, 0, right? The 0 vector. Correct? Yes. Do you getting what I am saying? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am getting. So, with respect to usual addition and scalar multiplication, the 0 vector is always 0, 0. Now, if I take only the zero vector of any vector space, that is itself a vector space, just a singleton set, zero comma zero. That is my W one. That is one vector subspace. Okay. Because this is itself a vector space. Only the zero vector, zero v. This only this this set. This is a vector space. Okay. Because all the condition is trivially satisfied. All the axioms. Is it clear to everyone? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, na? yes, sir. Clear, sir. Yeah. Then, when I am talking about the second type, second type of vector subspaces, what I am talking about? All the lines which are passing through origin. Is it clear? If in, there is a line which is not passing through origin, then it cannot contain the zero vector inside it. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. it cannot be a subspace. Yes, sir. Clear? So yes, take sir. any line which is passing through origin, that is another type of vector subspaces of R2. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the R2 itself, the whole R2, that is a vector space, the set itself, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Every set is a subspace of itself, right? Uh -huh. Every vector space is subspace of itself. Correct. Correct, right? Yes. Any doubt in that? No, sir. No, sir. So you know that every set is a subset of itself, right? Same kind yes. of set. Because that vector space is the, has all the properties being for a vector space. So it is a vector space, obviously. So it is a subspace of itself. Yes. Right? Yes. So, what type of uh, subspace R2 have? What, what sir? How many types are there for R2 subspaces? Three R2, types. Sir, three three types. types. Three types, sir. Three types. What are those? Uh, zero, zero, one line zero, passing zero. through origin and R2 itself. Yeah. It's yeah. It's 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 I mean, this is really important. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir, clear, sir. Actually, I don't understand that line. Yes, what are you saying? That second <laughs> means is different. Means I feel that very different. Means line passing through the origin. What is your doubt? Can you just uh, I mean, give me an compromise version? What are you trying to say? Means I don't understand that second of uh, option. Means uh, second uh, that line passing through the origin. So you are saying that should not be a subspace, is it? No, no, I don't understand that means. That why it is a subspace? Uh -huh.
what is this x x comma 2x how it look like in r2 can you tell me that if i plot this point on r2 how it will look like it will be the line passing to origin which line y comma 2x uh, correct yes the line passing through origin now my point is is it a subspace as uh, 0,0 0,0 is there right yes, yes. addition then addition is also there okay let me write it what is the first one x1 plus x2 comma one is 2x1 plus x2 right yes uh, what is scalar multiplication into x comma x cx comma to cx so this is also belongs to w right yes so this is a subspace correct yes that is what i am saying okay you take any line which is passing through origin any line which is passing through origin again any line which is passing through origin that will be a subspace yeah okay got it yeah yes so here if we take w equal to y instead of y i am taking mx y equal to mx are the line which is passing through origin right yes so if you take any such thing this will be a subspace of r okay for defined value of r you will get dependent subspaces is it okay. clear okay this is what i was saying any more okay. doubts no okay fine is it clear to everyone yes sir yes sir yes sir clear sir sir great great yeah so i think today i will end here because uh, lots of thing has been explained to them uh, i have doubt yes, in one question question. regarding linear dependence and independence will be and will they be covered yes, in next session or tomorrow, tomorrow tomorrow sir can you explain just one question from 3.2 3.2 question number 6 question number 6 ha in that it is last option c0 is equal to 0 where uh, c is uh, belongs to r and 0 is the zero vector but sir it is not necessary that zero vector is always zero zero then why will we get c into zero is equal to zero only we so can no zero vector right uh, no means what are the thing this is not zero i mean this is the zero vector so here it is given c into zero vector is zero vector is it true no c into zero vector ha huh, zero vector this is no, zero sir. vector whatever that be even if it is not 0, 0, but it will give me the zero vector back, right? No, sir. If suppose one comma two is the zero vector, then we will get c comma two c as. Uh, c. Yes, the multiplication is not the usual scalar multiplication, but you are doing the same mistake. But sir, so, where it is mentioned that uh, it is not usual. It may or may not. It has a zero vector, right? Whether yes. it is the usual addition or some addition, I have defined. It has some zero vector. Yes. Right. It may not yes. be the zero zero. Right. Yes. Yes. Maybe some other vector. Correct. Ah. Uh, yes. I am taking that vector. I am taking that scalar multiplication. Should not I get back the same zero vector? No, we will get multiple of that zero vector. That is zero, no? Multiple of zero vector is zero vector. See. Right. Uh, suppose i am what the example i have taken uh, this one x comma 1 right this was the example i have taken but 0 is not 0 comma 0 right yes uh, what was addition here x1 plus x2 comma 1 correct this is one then what was scalar multiplication there cx1 comma 1 correct what was zero vector here zero vector Uh, 0, 1. Great. 0, 1. Now take any C. 0, 1. What is the multiplication I am getting? We have to use the multiplication. Uh huh. 
zero comma one. Are you okay. getting the same thing? Ah, okay, okay. Okay, I got. So it depends on the scalar multiplication. It not depends on the zero vector. I mean, whatever the zero vector is. But sir, in the question, it should be clearly mentioned that uh, whether to take usual addition or means. Uh, no, that is not necessary. This is true for everything, whether it is usual or whether it is unusual. It is always true. That no, is sir. my point. For usual, we will get zero comma c. No, then for usual, your zero is zero comma zero. Ah, uh, okay, zero comma zero. For okay. usual addition of scalar matrix, what is your zero? Zero comma zero. Then what is c into zero comma zero? Zero comma zero. You are getting the same thing, right? Yes. 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 Clear? Is it clear? Yes. Yes. Sir, and for uh, means we have to check all the eight exams every time, or it's very time consuming, or is there any shortcut? For which you have to check? For any example, uh, if, if we have, have to check, check for vector space, you have to check all that. Is there any shortcut for that? Oh, okay, so thank you. You have to check all the exam, but remember the order is important, I have said. So maybe for first one or two, you will get some contradiction. First one, two, three, four. Suppose zero does not okay. exist. If zero exists, suppose, uh, uh, I mean, scalar multiplication is not close. This type of case happens. Right? Okay. okay. You have to look for that. So you don't have to, when it is not a vector space, you don't have to check much. If it is a vector space, then you have to go through all this. But uh, that will be clear, I think. If you try I and mean, if you practice, it will not take much time. Okay, okay. Is it clear? Yes. Uh, sir, uh, how can that zero vector equals to zero comma one? Sir, I didn't understand that. So why do you present from the beginning of my session? Uh, no, sir. Oh, so I, I think you should go back and see the screen. Oh, okay, sir. I have it. Good. Because I have already explained. I have, I mean, I have done this. Exercise. Okay, sir. Yeah. I will watch it. I'll just take a look. Is it clear? I mean, whatever I have said today, is it? I mean, does it make some sense about yes. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It really uh, makes sense, yes, sir. and it. So no, that uh, a fine a fine mapping that concept can you explain in the uh, no, next? No, you first, uh, Amruta, you first uh, clear your basic vector space and subspace concept. Okay, then go for a fine and everything. Okay. No, in the lecture uh, it is uh, taught. Ha, it it may be there, but I will suggest you first clarify what a vector space is, what are zeros, what are subspaces. First clarify this basic part, then you go for a fine. Okay. Oh. Basically, this example, what I have done, this example, x small one, this is what an affine vector space is. Okay. Where the zero is not our usual zero. That so no, what sir, what sir explained in the lecture, I could not understand. Means he said that we have you to project. Uh, huh? This we have understood. This I have understood. Uh, this is basically your affine thing. Okay. Okay, sir. I will again wash you. So I will I will break it down why it is I find how it is related to the lecture as I said. I will I will relate with this. But for now, if you have understood this, then I think it is enough. You can solve the problems, whatever the problems are there. Okay. Okay. So, okay. okay. so oh, more or less something something is at least clarified to them. I don't know. It always takes time for the past two weeks, definitely. Okay, so see you in the next class. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, tomorrow I will not take, but uh, Sushmita will take. Thank, Thank you, sir. I will. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah.